what was your personal experience with your family in coming into communion with the Catholic Church? Well, I, I suppose I became a I wanted to become a Catholic because ever since I was a young Anglican priest, and that's a long time ago, I was ordained as an Anglican in 1975, I'd always longed for unity with the Catholic Church. And the whole, uh, what's called the Archic process, the Anglican Roman Catholic International Commission, which met from uh, the 60s and, and continues to meet, uh, was to lead to corporate communion between the Anglicans and Catholics. Sadly, as years went by, that hope diminished, mm. particularly because the Anglican Church introduced new obstacles, which made it more impossible or less possible for unity to take place. And so that was very frustrating. So when Pope Benedict responded uh, to, to various requests he'd had, it was, for me, an answer to prayers. I was becoming, uh, I could become a Catholic, but also not leave behind the traditions which had nurtured me, but bring them into the fullness of the Catholic Church. So it was, it was, it was, in one sense, it was an easy decision for me to make. Uh, and when I'd made it, Pope Benedict put me in charge of the ordinaries in the United Kingdom. Uh, I'm the ordinary. Uh, I'm not a bishop because I'm married, uh, but I have all the authority of a bishop. I'm part of the bishop's conference. I do everything a bishop can do except ordain people. And I have to get a bishop to ordain for me. We have within the ordinaries in, the, in, in England a uh, just a bit less than 100 priests. So it's quite wow. quite a large number. Are they all married? No, about two-thirds are. And that's been a con sort of consistent uh, percentage through our history, really. So about about 60 are, are married and about 30 are not married. Now, many people make this case for marriage and the priesthood out of concerns for sexual abuse. Your concern is familial, personal experience. Can you explain that to us quickly? Yeah, well, I... I I think it's wrong to say that the, the, the abuse crisis is a result of celibacy. I don't think that's true. It's it's to do with, with commitment and faithfulness and all sorts of things. Um, but I do think that, that you, you bring something different as a married priest to the church uh, uh, to... to, to uh, make real the, the sort of the idea of the domestic church within the priesthood. Uh, so, you know, the, to have a family at the centre of the parish is is quite significant, I think. And this is not something totally unknown to the Catholic Church. As you well know, that in the East, uh, parish priests are married. It's not unusual. Uh, but in the Western Church, it's an exception, uh, 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 the, an exception, which a pastoral exception, which only the Pope can grant. But I think you do bring something with you, uh, which is which is... Um, complementary, I think, to the uh, witness that celibates give. It's not better, it's not worse, it's just complementary. Now, you talked about the East and the West, but you have an experience evangelizing in Africa that where you were being married was helpful to you. Can you tell us that story? Oh, I think that's true. I, I was for six years a, a missionary in Malawi uh, as an Anglican, um, and I went out with uh, my wife and two children, and we came back after six years with my wife and three children. Um, <laughs> so one of them was born there. Um, I, I think it's certainly in the African context, uh, marriage is very, very important. The, the whole extended family is really important in a way that we've lost in the West, I think. And to have a sort of family at the centre of parish life, I think is quite, is quite significant for, for African families. Um, I think celibacy is 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 much more alien concept in in, Anglica, in African traditions than it is perhaps in the West. And does this debate then of married priesthood affect the way that you discuss things with your brother bishops? You get a lot of pushback in relating these stories to them. No, not particularly. I mean, you know, we we we. I felt generally pretty pretty welcomed as a. I'm the only I'm the only married member of our bishops conference. Um, that's not a particular problem, I don't think. Although I'm not sure that the bishops always understand the pressures that married families have. I mean, I don't mean clergy families, just families generally. And um, I think if you you've got the experience of being a a married man, then then you can relate to people and their own problems with bringing up a family uh, in a way that perhaps it's not quite so easy uh, when you're a celibate. I think. And is there anything now with the Synod coming up, everyone's thinking about the Synod, that we can expect on this issue in particular or that you hope will come out of that? 
Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I, you know, the Holy Father says that this is not going to be changing doctrine and teachings of the church. But of course, the celibacy of the clergy is a discipline and not a doctrine. Uh, and I don't feel as a married priest, it's my job to push this agenda. If the church decided it was going to really have a discussion about the benefits of having a married priesthood, then I think we'd have a lot to, to contribute to it. But I have to say, I don't think that ordaining married men would be a sinecure for the Catholic Church. It would not solve all its problems of vocations. I'm absolutely sure of that. Hmm. I think there are, you know, there, there are different factors working around that. Uh, but it is not a matter of doctrine, so it may well be something that is discussed and opened. But I don't think it will, it will change the vocation crisis we have in the West. I mean, we, we, I think we, one has to recognise that if you're going to have a married clergy, uh, then the wife has to have a real understanding of what her husband does. Mm -hmm. um, it's, he hasn't got a job. Uh, he, ha he, he has a, 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 a vocation. He lives the life of a priest. And if the wife doesn't share that, that sort of vision, then there will be problems. I mean, in the, back in the Church of England, from the church from which I came, there were many marriage breakdowns. And I think partly because uh, the, the people did not really understand that. So I think the, the wife of a priest has to be a very particular person. I think she has to be a, a, you know, a faithful Christian Catholic and also understands what her husband is about and how he gives himself, as well as to his family, also to his vocation. It's a beautiful, beautiful vocation. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Not at all, it's my pleasure.